Donald Trump is in panic mode. That's according to new reporting from my colleague Caitlin Collins as he struggles to meet a Monday deadline to come up with nearly half a billion dollars to cover the judgment against him in his New York fraud case. And just this morning, New York Attorney General Letitia James told a judge that he should ignore Trump's claim that he can't find an insurance company to help him pay. CNN's Kara Spinell joins me live from New York. Kara. Yeah, Dana, so this new filing from the New York Attorney General's office, they're saying to the judge that Trump is making this claim that he has, you know, tried to get a, a bond underwritten by 30 underwriters, that it's nearly impossible to get done. They're saying that the judge should ignore it. It's essentially too late, they say, for him to make this argument. But the Attorney General's office says if they are going to consider it, they want the appeals court to ask some more questions. Essentially, they want to know what efforts Trump actually made to get these, to get a bond. What were the terms that were put forward? You know, trying to get to the bottom of did Trump just not like the terms or was he really unable to get it? They also urged the appeals court to discount the testimony of some of the, the insurance broker and Trump's legal officer who, you know, had said that they made these efforts that no one would underwrite the bond because they wouldn't underwrite it based on real estate. You know, Trump's lawyers are saying that maybe Trump should try to pool and get a number of underwriters to come together to underwrite a half a billion dollar bond. Uh, they also suggested that Trump should have put up some of his properties with the court to secure this judgment. But, you know, this is still, as the clock is ticking, the ball is in the hands of the appeals court panel. They have to decide if they're going to grant Trump's motion to either allow him to post a bond that's less than half a billion dollars or to say he doesn't have to post one until the appeal of this whole case plays out. Now, the deadline for Trump to come up with the bond is Monday. And if he doesn't, that's when the New York Attorney General's office can begin to try to enforce this judgment. That means they can try to seize bank accounts. They can try to seize some properties. They can start taking steps to move forward to enforce this judgment. Dana? Kara, thank you so much for that. I want to bring in Bill Cohan of Puck, who has reported extensively on this. Nice to see you, Bill. Uh, let's start with what Kara was just talking about, that uh, Trump's attorneys say that he's tried, tried very hard to get a bond, and it's not possible. Can you break down why he couldn't get one? Well, Dana, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, he, he can't really get one because he's not a good credit risk, Dana. He, he hasn't been a good credit risk for a very long time. Uh, w during the 90s, uh, you know, six or so of his uh, companies went bankrupt. So that is something that uh, annoys creditors across Wall Street who have long memories. Uh, and he's also been known to not pay contractors and subcontractors and lawyers. So people remember that. And so when he's seeking a bond for more than $500 million, the risk of him paying, of him losing uh, his appeals or his judgment against him falls to those bond issuers, mm -hmm. not to him. And then they'd have to go after him if they don't pay, if he doesn't pay them. So, uh, you know, they don't want to take that risk. Why should they? Why should any of take that risk at the moment. He's proven himself to be a very risky credit risk. Okay, so let's take getting a bond off the table then, and yes. let's look at his assets, because that is another way that he can pay uh, this $500 billion uh, judgment. And some of the assets that we're talking about, and we'll give some of what we think are their worth, uh, the uh, Avenue of Americas, $500 million. 40 Wall Street, $270 million. Uh, California Street, which is in San Francisco, $125 million. Now, some of these he owns, some of these he has an investment in, uh, so we can talk about that. And then also Mar-a-Lago, of course, $240 million, which I believe he owns outright. Uh, the Doral Golf Course, which he loves, $305 million. And the famous Trump Tower penthouse, which uh, is apparently worth about $40 million. What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, the two uh, properties, the one on the Avenue of the Americas, the one in San Francisco, are out owned by Vernado, a mm -hmm. different company. He owns a minority stake in those. Uh, I don't think he's going to have much luck uh, with that minority stake using that as collateral for a bond. Um, you know, so and I and I, I think also those prices are probably pretty high for both of those that you put on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in his deposition, as you'll remember, in, in April of last year, in this case, he said he had 400 million in cash and growing every day. 
uh, that apparently doesn't seem to be the case because if he had that kind of cash, uh, he'd be using that as collateral. Uh, we're also talking about, uh, you know, a pretty distressed uh, market for commercial real estate in Manhattan these days. Uh, and so, I'm, you know, how quickly he can get the money uh, if you were have to sell these buildings, uh, people would want to take advantage of that. It would be a distressed sale. They'd try to take advantage. We also don't know how much leverage, how much debt is already on some of these buildings mm -hmm. because, you know, he's a private company. He doesn't have to disclose that. Although some of that does get out. Uh, I think he has got debt and mortgages on all of these properties. Mm. So, you know, what is the equity value of these things? That's another thing that, uh, you know, the bonders are going to look for. You know, if you sum it all up, Dana, I'm thinking at this point he really isn't going to have much choice but to file for personal bankruptcy. And I know that's something he doesn't want to do uh, and has said he doesn't want to do, but uh, it would stay this judgment. It would throw it all into bankruptcy court, and that would buy him the time that he so desperately needs wow, in this you, situation. You think that's the most likely scenario, that he files for bankruptcy? That would be a big deal for a, a presidential candidate of any kind, but particularly one who uh, is running on his prowess as a business person. Yes, of course, but I, I think he could, he's the master spinner, right? So he'll be able to spin that uh, if it happens. Uh, I'm sure he'll spin that in a way that will appeal to his backers. No question. Uh, but I don't really see that he has any other choice at this point. I don't see who's going to give him it, this money. It, let me just ask you about that before I let you go, because... Mm. It is, I guess, possible for him to get money from an outside investor or backer. He could get it from uh, another billionaire that's more liquid. He could potentially get it from a foreign national. But then that, of course, uh, brings in other problems when it comes to his presidential campaign and campaign finance laws. Right. And I think even if you were to get the money from another billionaire who would be you know, a bit crazy to do it, but it could happen, uh, that might run afoul of federal election mm -hmm. laws as well. That would be a very big donation to a presidential yeah. candidate. Yeah, so I guess we're going to take that off the, uh, off the list. Thanks for breaking it down. Appreciate it, Bill. Thank you. Tara, I want to bring you on this because we were having a really interesting conversation earlier uh, in, the, uh, in the 5 a.m. hour about just how important uh, the money is. Let, let's, let's show, this was Alina Habba was on uh, Fox News uh, earlier in the week, and she was asked about you know, does Donald Trump have enough money to pay his bond? Here's what she claimed. Does Donald Trump so. have that kind yeah. of money sitting around? Yes. I mean, he does. Of course, he has money. You know, he's a billionaire. Um, we know that. They know by looking at his statements of financial condition that this guy is worth a lot of money, billions and billions of billions of dollars. So, Tara, with all due respect, if that were true, I think he'd be able to pay half a billion yeah. dollars in bond. Right. Uh, but money is really driving everything, is my understanding, right. based on your reporting um, right. that's going on with the team, the Trump team right now. Well, Donald Trump is just feeling the crash crunch. Um, he's in a very vulnerable position compared to Joe Biden, who's going to outraise him. Uh, right now, he's just he's about $50 million behind the DNC and the Joe Biden campaign. So he's sort of looking at everyone who comes through Mar-a-Lago, kind of currying favor, trying to get in a cabinet position, an administration posting, even the vice presidency, as someone who can possibly raise him cash or bring in a white whale donor that he needs. And when I mean white whale donors, I mean people like Sheldon Adelson, who gave him $100 million in 2016, because he's going to need like 10 of these. We know that both candidates are going to have to spend about a billion dollars each and probably what will be the most expensive election in terms of advertising in our lifetime. So it's not just about like, I don't think it says, based on my reporting, when he's looking at people, he's not really thinking about like, it's, it's not a voter play per se. Um, as much or a or even, you know, I guess a demographic play in a lot of ways. It's really a donor play. Like, yes, he looks at Tim Scott and says maybe he can bring over African-American voters. Maybe he can bring over some swing voting white women in the suburbs. But more than that, he's thinking to himself, can he get Larry Ellison to write me a hundred million dollar check? Because Larry Ellison wrote him a $30 million check back in the Senate. Wrote so, Tim Scott one, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, he's trying to bring in big hitters like John Polson, a hedge fund billionaire who wants a Treasury Secretary position. Polson holds parties for him, fundraisers in Palm Beach, and he can bring in all his friends. So, you know, Trump is playing footsie with all these people, and what can he dangle? Appointments. It's typically used to be ambassadorships, which you brought up off air before, but it can be as much anything as like, the, the vice presidency, I mean, you have your own donor base. Can you bring them along? And I think, personally, based on my reporting, Trump has the evangelical base. He's got his MAGA people. What he really needs is money and, 
And the other issue, obviously, is abortion. That's something that's on his mind. The folks well. love to point out, of course, that Hillary Clinton outraised them in 2016, and they still right. want to, to defeat her. The, in, the equation is entirely different. He was running as a purely insurgent candidate at the point, new to the scene. Uh, the money game, I think, matters more now, probably, than it did back in 2016 for yeah. Donald Trump.